imagine this. You wake up one morning to your phone buzzing. You look and you see it's a call from an unknown number. You pick up and then you hear your mom's voice and she sounds worried. She's panicking and she's asking you to wire her money immediately. She's calling from someone else's phone because she's claiming that she got pickpocketed earlier that day. Except it's not your mom. It's a deep fake, but you can't tell the difference. Everything seems pretty normal when you get that call, but how would you really know if it was actually your mom or not? We now live in a world where AI can perfectly mimic voices, faces, and even behavior. And this isn't just some crazy, scary thought experiment. Scams like this are already happening. Fraudsters around the world are already using AI-powered deepfake technology to imitate the voices and even faces of people that you may know. With just 15 seconds of an audio or video file from social media, these fraudsters can convincingly clone a voice, calling in as a panicked parent or as a kidnapped child, creating urgency that is designed to bypass any rational thinking. People are already losing thousands and thousands of dollars to these scams, and there are reports from law enforcement saying that they're seeing these scams pick up in frequency as well as intensity. And at first it was all about audio, but apparently now video is also coming into the equation. So places like Zoom, your FaceTime, and even other video apps might not be safe. This is not science fiction. This is really happening. And in a world where we have AI continuing to take over more and more of our daily life, how are we going to know what's real? It's all going to come down to the concept of digital identity. And let's talk about how this all works today. Right now, most digital identity systems rely on centralized servers. So your phone number, your email, your social media account, your bank logins, and even your national identity number all are maintained on centralized servers by corporations or by governments. These systems or databases even are in place so that you can verify your identity when you are using them. But they have one big problem as they exist today, and it's that they are centralized. You may have seen how the treasury got hacked over the past year or so, revealing potentially sensitive information of tons of Americans. These centralized systems can be hacked, they can even be manipulated by someone on the inside, and also they can go offline. If someone were to compromise any of these centralized systems and databases, then they could potentially get access to information that would allow them to impersonate someone else. You may have noticed that when you call your bank these days, they may actually ask you to say a prompt out loud. They're trying to analyze your voice so that they can know whether or not there's AI being used to get access to your accounts. Even with a file of your voice recorded in that bank's database, technically someone could still hack into that database and change the file. Even multi-factor authentication could fail, once again, if the database itself gets compromised. That extra text that you get with a pin could go to the wrong number or to the wrong email address. The methods that we have in place right now rely on centralized servers, which can be compromised. This is why decentralized identity managed on a blockchain could change everything. Instead of trusting a single company or server, verification could be distributed across a global network. Records couldn't be altered or even censored by any particular party. This could create a system where you could actually verify identity securely, even if someone is trying to trick you with some AI impersonation. Remember that scenario we talked about at the beginning where your mom is calling you asking for some money. Let's talk about how a blockchain based digital identity system could potentially solve that. Let's imagine that your mom loses her phone and she goes up to someone else asking to use theirs. She's going to take the phone. She's going to download an app that is a decentralized identity app. Now, when she does that, she's going to already have uploaded into this app on her other phone, her face scan or her fingerprint. And that information was stored on a blockchain. So now when she comes and gets this phone and she scans her face or gives her fingerprint to that app, 
it's actually going to allow her to log in to that decentralized identity. So now, even if your mom is using someone else's phone, a tablet or computer, she can still log into her decentralized identity. Her biometric scan is going to confirm that it's really her. And these apps are going to link to the blockchain to validate that data. Now this identity information is on a decentralized ledger that can't be altered or censored. The reason that a blockchain is extremely helpful for this is because otherwise that face scan or the fingerprint that's linked to your mom's identity could just be altered, hacked or censored. Blockchain would provide a decentralized tamper proof way to store that information. In this scenario, blockchain becomes the backbone of trust for AI and digital interactions entirely. This would help to ensure that everything you see and that you hear is authentically actually being provided by the person that you believe it is being provided by. Now, as powerful as blockchain technology is, it does not come without its flaws. Using biometrics isn't necessarily perfect. I mean, what if the system malfunctions and it can't read your finger or it can't also get a good scan of your face? Also, someone could just scan your face on their own behalf and use that information against you. Also, the device security still matters. If someone has access to what's happening in the back end of the phone, that could potentially be used to manipulate the data that's going into the app. Now, here's something else to think about. While the blockchain itself that's storing all of that information could be decentralized, it doesn't necessarily mean that the app that you're using to access and verify on the blockchain is decentralized. And so that app could have bugs or it could malfunction. And let's address the elephant in the room. I mean, tell me about how excited you are to scan your face or your fingerprint and put that on an immutable ledger. That certainly raises some concerns about who actually is in control of such data and how much of that is exposed. Now, there are some advanced techniques such as zero knowledge proofs or ZKPs that can help to add another layer of security when it comes to this kind of data. So while blockchain based digital identity definitely provides a stronger layer of trust, it doesn't solve every problem. A system is only as secure as the security practices around using it, and there will always be new attack vectors to consider. Until something is done to either adopt a blockchain based system or something else that can help us to protect ourselves, here are a few things that you can be doing. The first is to use some sort of a family password. You don't have to write this down, in fact you probably shouldn't, but you should have some sort of a code word or a way to speak to your family members so that you guys can verify each other's identity without having to be in the room present with one another. This needs to be some sort of information that no one would know unless they knew you in your history. Another thing you can try to do is to verify communication directly. So if you get a call from someone and it says that it's coming from someone on your phone, instead of answering and assuming that it's actually that person, you may actually hang up and call them back. For instance, I had to do this with my bank recently. I had a call from Chase. It said it on my phone. It said it was Chase. And uh, instead of answering that call, what I did was I looked up the number to see if this was actually Chase's number. And then what I did was I called my bank directly from the online number that I could see for support. Another thing is to watch for urgency or emotional manipulation. Scammers rely on you being in a panic so that you're not thinking rationally. Take a moment to slow down and think about whether or not things that are happening make sense. Be cautious of any unfamiliar voice or video calls. Treat every unknown number with extreme skepticism. Don't trust everything that you see or that you hear because these deep fakes are becoming increasingly sophisticated. If you want to continue to stay ahead of the curve, understand how technology is impacting our social life and also the economy and markets, then like and subscribe for more. I'm going to continue to break down AI, blockchain, and how this is impacting society and also the economy. I'm Keith D. See you next time.